Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. Hello, listeners. Thank you for joining me today. I have Marie. She is with a company that has subscription games for caregivers and those they're caring for. So thank you for joining me, Marie. Hi. Happy to be with you as well. Thank you. So Marie told me she's originally from Montreal, but she is now in San Diego. So slightly different weather for you. (laughs) Yes, very different. (laughs) (laughs) I hope to get to Montreal sooner or later. The last couple of years have kind of put a, a, a cramp in the traveling bug, but we're getting back to it. So how, tell us about you, your history with caregiving and how that inspired you to start Gleam in Your Eye. Yes. In 2012, my mom was unfortunately diagnosed with Alzheimer, early onset Alzheimer. She was 59 years old. And as other family, we were very affected about it. My mom was very affected about it. We were very affected. And um, early onset Alzheimer, uh, sometimes it progressed very fast. And especially at the beginning, then my mom very fast, she was not able to enjoy her normal pastime as she's used to do. Then she was used to read a book every week. She was used to do crossword every day. Uh, Then it was very sad for her because she never likes to watch TV. And then she was like, what I will do, how I will distract myself all day. Then I I said, oh, no, mom, I don't want you to to be depressed. As many other family as well and other people affected by Alzheimer's. Then I started to to um, to go search some games, some activities I can do with her who will be adapted. But I was finding nothing on the market seven years ago. I was only finding some stuff for kids, uh, or puzzle for kids, uh, stories, short stories for kids. And I'm like, no way I will give that to my mom. She's still, she's still there. Um, then uh, I contacted a few health professionals uh, from the uh, Geriatric Institute of Montreal and speech therapists, neuropsychologists, uh, neurologists, geriatrician, uh, physical therapists. I, I'm like, I was contacting a lot of people and asking questions where I can find stuff to do with my mom, what I, and they were saying, there is nothing really then I, but we will help you marie to develop some like oh okay nice and uh, then i launched my first company it, it it was a publishing house i published two books two activity books for people with moderate stage dementia and uh, the the games are all adapted and gleam in your eye just arrived last uh, october uh, and we launched this new company because I wanted something that people can touch, smell, feel, and discuss about object. And, and with the books, I, I was limited. And uh, it's why uh, it's all the story behind Gleam in Your Eye. My mom, she's now in a nursing home. Um, she's at the very late stage of dementia now. Uh, she doesn't speak anymore. Even her eye contact is defi- it's it's R. And then it's, but I'm, I'm happy to help other families. <laughs> I'm always amazed at how many f- caregivers write books, create apps. They create something in the midst of taking care of somebody that takes up a lot of your energy and a lot of your time. I just, you know, I started a podcast. Lots of people write books. You've started two different companies. I just, you know, us caregivers, we're, we're doers. We make things happen even when it's very difficult. So the, the one question I had, because with my mom, I, the reason I started the podcast was because I could not find things to do with her that were, you know, engaging and respectful and didn't make me want to scream. 
She was very happy sitting around just shooting the breeze, asking me the same question every three minutes. Oh, hey, what have you been up to lately? Uh, you know, after a while, it's like, why am I here? It's like, I should have just made this a 15 minute visit and then and then left, which may or may not have been such a horrible idea. <laughs> but because her visual processing was so bad and it took me a long time to figure out that that's what the issue was. She, you know, the, the standard advice of simplifying activities they used to love or hobbies they used to love. And my mom was really creative. She was, she sewed, she did woodworking uh, mm. later in life. Yeah. Like <laughs> with tools and things that can cause great harm. And she had to be the fairly early stages of her Alzheimer's. She had younger al onset Alzheimer's as well. So it was, it was really frustrating, but she, I, well, there was one day when I finally convinced her to sit down and do the coloring with the other ladies. They did use pencils. They didn't use crayons like little kids. And she couldn't figure out what was inside the line and what was outside the line. Not that I cared, but it was just really frustrating for her. It was like, well, this is not relaxing or fun. So we didn't do that again. But that was our big challenge was visualizing like what she was seeing was not what her brain was processing. Have you ever taught It sounds like you talked to everybody. <laughs> Did you ever talk yeah. to anybody about how to adapt games for people whose brains don't see what their eyes are seeing? So like a really big trick question kind of early in the morning for both of us. <laughs> oh, it's a very good question uh, about what they see differently. No, but it it can be interesting to 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 search about it. What I know, uh, uh, what is important for me when I create games, and what I I say to families who are struggling to find activities, it's always to start where the person is, uh, to evaluate a little bit what they are still able to do because. Because we don't want them to be frustrated. We don't. We want them to succeed. But sometimes you can be surprised with what they are still able to do. Uh, there is families who didn't know their loved one were able to write. They thought that they were not able to write anymore or not able to read anymore. Then it's good to just take some activities to evaluate. Okay, your loved one. My my loved one is now there. What we can propose like the coloring you did with your mom what we propose and what the neuropsychologist told me about co appropriate coloring book it's the line are not too small very large lines that they will because their mother skills and my uh, little uh, are less uh, uh, good then uh, like that if it's bigger uh, they will be okay to to draw and they will feel uh, they succeed it's little things like that that we put in our games that always we think um, and what they will like also I also always suggest to uh, families to think of games that they were not used to play with their loved one like to to take a balloon and jump just drop the balloon together and have fun. They will, they will like, ah, my mom, we never did that together, but try it. Maybe she will, they will like it. You never know. And even one of my friend or dad, he has Alzheimer. And I propose a painting of a birdhouse in one of the box that we, we, we sell. And he said, oh, my dad will never do that. Forget that, Mary. I never painted and yeah. I said to him, okay, just sit, take your bird house. Both of you have a bird house, start to paint and I and put all the material on the table. And I assure you at 100% that your dad will come and start to paint with you. And it's what he did. And his dad came and they painted together the bird house. Then sometimes you can be surprised uh, what your loved one can still do. And by showing the first movement, how to do the, how to, to take the pencil of to, to coloring, to hold the pencil, or even you just ask him, oh, do you want me to draw for you? And you, you can even tell me which color I pick. And you, there is so many ways the speech therapists are giving me tips how to do the games and yeah, many ways, but it's very good question. I will, uh, I will look for that. 
Oh, thank you. Sorry, a big, a big answer for <laughs> okay. uh, fish. If you are correct on they may enjoy things that you would not expect because my mom did do the, th you know, throwing or bouncing the balloon around with the other residents, which yes. makes me remember a story. And I'm, I'm wondering if somehow her brain went there. We had it when I was, um, you know, from like 12 to actually 25, <laughs> the dog lived for 13 years. This dog loved to chase balloons. So every birthday, oh. you know, we'd have balloons and you'd snap it so it would fly and she would chase the balloon. And we had ridiculous amount of photographs of the dog chasing the balloon. So it might have brought back that memory or that feeling. I don't know. It, Cause I was surprised the first time I saw her doing it, I was like, are you kidding me? I can't get you to do the stuff that I know you would have enjoyed, but you do this. It's like, that was the hard part was I was trying to do stuff that I knew she would enjoy and she didn't enjoy them. And then I was stuck. So we yes. ended up going, as everybody knows, that's listened to enough episodes. Mom and I would always go to the park or wherever and just sit and watch children. Cause at least I could then answer emails on my phone or relax and enjoy the, the warm air and the nature, you know, it was much better than sitting around in the care home with her asking me the same question 15 times in, an, you know, 20 minutes. Yeah. And you know, you, you, you are not a recreational therapist or occupational therapist. You're not uh, trained to develop some activities and to think out of the box every time. Uh, and it's normal. Me too. Some right now, my mom, because she's a very light, late stage, I saw her last week and I I didn't know what to do always for four hours with her a day. I was, uh, yeah, sometimes I opened the TV and we were watching TV together. But at one point, it's difficult to, to have an idea every minute. Then it's why we, it's why I want to help uh, families uh, to give them some adapted product for their loved one and they can engage and still have memorable moments together. I do have one comment to what you just said. It took me way too long and way too many guests telling me more and shorter visits were better because I would do the same thing. I would go on Mondays after a meeting. So I would go from after lunch to about the time they were serving dinner. So about three hours. It's long. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm telling you the times that we had an hour and it was very, you know, very structured. So we, one of the best visits we had was our Christmas lunch in 2019. My mom passed away at the beginning of the pandemic from Alzheimer's, not from the pandemic. And yes. we, I picked her up. I put her in the car. I drove around the building to the main entrance where the assisted living was. We went into their dining room. We had a very lovely lunch. I gave her one Christmas present, which was hard because our family likes to be <laughs> a little crazy with the gifts, or that's how it was when I was growing up. And it felt very like it didn't feel loving enough. But I also knew yes. she didn't need stuff and she would, new stuff would not be remembered as hers. So I'm like, I'm not going to waste a bunch of money on things that she's going to give away or lose or whatever, because that'll just upset me too. And we had the best lunch and I have oh, no nice. regrets that it was literally like an hour from the minute I picked her up to the minute I drove back around the building and took her into the memory care part of the community. So I think what... What I didn't understand is it takes so much energy for their brains to process this video or video bleh, visit. <laughs> like I said, it's a little bit early and it's exhausting. And the more tired they get and their energy level, like my mom would start getting tired and then she'd just get cranky and obnoxious. And, and the one day that I went to the ladies room and came back and she's like, Oh, hi what are you doing here? I was like, Oh my God, I've been here for two hours and now it's all gone. I have to start over. <laughs> so I can generally go an hour before I have to use the ladies. Room. <laughs> so it might help, you know, if you can go more than once a week for four hours, that's a long time, especially if she's yeah. in the later stages. 
Yeah, what I was doing, I was going for lunch. I was staying like one hour and a half and I was going for dinner after. I, I was taking a break between the lunch and the dinner. Yeah, it was a better two hours each time. It was good. And I, I starting to do like a routine with her. Like we always go for a walk together. She's still able to walk very slowly and sing song together. And uh, and uh, after that, sit to talk or put music. Yeah, I, it, I think routine is it help when you visit also. And uh, Yes. And then just be just be ready to have all your plans thrown out the window. <laughs> Cuz that's very yes. typical. So what type So this is a subscription that people get monthly, obviously. Yeah, they can subscribe uh, monthly then they are they can cancel anytime. Then this is an option and or 3 months or 6 months they can subscribe. We we decided to to use this model of business of subscription because we think it's easier for a caregiver uh, to just subscribe and you receive every month some games. You don't have to look online. You don't have to search online. It just comes to your house and with a variety of games inside and develop with health professional again. Then it's we're we think it's it's a good way uh, to um, yeah it's a good business model and a good way to help caregivers. So what type of items come every month? Because I know it's different, obviously. Yes. Every month we pick a new team. And uh, then, uh, for example, this month, and I think your mom will have loved it. It was about do it yourself. Then we put some games uh, with the uh, wood uh, to recreate some shapes of a, a table, a couch, of some, some uh, equipment in the house. Uh, I put some tools that you use to do uh, uh, things in the house and you need to uh, associate with shades. Uh, we put also um, uh, a, a wool, a wool um, ah, the word that you, you need to, uh, you have a ball, a ball uh -huh. of wool. Uh -huh. You need to roll it uh, around the, uh, oh, something for pom -poms? that you need to do. Yes, for example, but easier than that. Okay. Uh, and this, it was all about do it yourself, a very funny box uh, uh, and uh, also cards association because there is always five categories in each box. We want them to explore different parts of their brain and have fun differently. Then we always have a game, physical game, an art game, uh, a uh, logic game, a uh, word game, and uh, a sensory game. Then the sensory game will be about touching, smelling, view, uh, or ear. Uh, then it's uh, it's a full box of different things that we always make sure that you will like one of these one games for sure in the box. And with and with the with teams very general that it's. Even you are a man or a woman, it it will be appropriate. Makes and sense. Not childish, not yeah. childish. <laughs> I just this is did very important. <laughs> yes, it is. I know caregivers who haven't. I don't want to say trained or instructed, but they've they've taught their loved one to reject childish activities if they go to a day program or something which I understand, but I'm not sure I agree with. It's one of those things like my dad used to always say, well, I'm of two minds of this. And he was a Gemini. So that always made me laugh. And every time I, every time I'm between two opinions, I'm like, well, as dad always said, I'm of two minds of this, <laughs> but it's, I, I think my mom would have been okay with stuff that was slightly more childish, but I don't know that I would have been. So it's nice that people understand that we can make adaptive games for people who aren't, you know, ch school aged. And I, yes. I just did a webinar on making memory boxes and they're kind of, it's yes. kind of along the same lines. And I seriously yes. wish I had known this 10 years ago, but they were talking about um, like for my mom, because my mom used to sew, I, I tried to focus on the hobbies that she did as an adult and as I was growing up, but I don't think I went far enough back in her history. 
And my mom started taking sewing classes in high school. So I could have Ugh. had different types of fabric to feel and talk about. Yes. Like, oh, what would you make with this? Um, I was, I had, what else? Oh, like the big, the zippers that are um, heavy duty. So they're really kind of big. And just, yes. you know, sewing type things that weren't needles, <laughs> pins, <Yes>. scissors. <laughs> so it's. There's lots of ways to do it, so that's all more tactile and and the um, scent, you know, the feel, and maybe yes. maybe a little bit of smell, although not necessarily with fabric. So, do you have? I'm sure you must have lots of stories from people that have gotten these boxes and and their experiences with them that you could share with us. Yeah, uh, but I was sharing one at the beginning of a family who di discovered that their loved one were was able to write, still able to write, then they were very happy about it. And some was surprised that they were able to paint or they liked to paint. Uh, some other, what we got also, uh, other family were very happy with the design, not childish. Uh, we had we got feedback about the the pictures we, 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 we put, uh, it, the discussion because we also always put discussion topics to to talk with your loved one when they were happy about it because sometimes you just don't know what to say anymore <laughs> then it's good to just have a, a different uh, and we have also um a, a family who it's the grandson who visit his grandfather with the box and uh is very happy to have it because he didn't want to go to visit his grandpa anymore. Then because of the box, now they have games to play together. They have something to do. He's going to see again his grandfather. He really enjoyed the games together. This, it's very precious for us that we can help uh, this way. And then that grandson's not going to regret visiting. And since you've made it easier and more pleasurable, He'll have really good memories. And that's yes. that's fantastic because my daughter and my mom were very, very close. My daughter is 14 years older than grandchild number two. So she got all the good years with my mom. And after we had moved my mom into memory care, we went and visited. And I should have known better, but it was so it was so heartbreaking and so stressful. My daughter didn't go back. She's like, I can't do yeah. this. And it was, and that bothered me because I'm like, you and your grandmother were really close. But I also knew that, you know, I was struggling and I'm like, she's not going to be able to do this and she's supporting me. So I justified it. But, you know, I hope she doesn't regret that decision, but it was really, really hard and it didn't get Hi. easier. <laughs> I have the same feeling with my nephew about my mom, but uh, I know, I, yes, I understand because I know how it's hard and I really understand families uh, and it's hard to see your loved one different. It's not the same person in a way that you're used to, to see. Then um, I understand it. And it's why with our games, we, we really want that it can help a little bit in our way to enjoy a better moment. And, and also, like you said, sometimes the person repeat and repeat the same word, repeat the same question. And you're oh my God, <laughs> your patient is just, and I said this tip to a caregiver. I said, have you tried to just play or distract or redirect the, the discussion with a, a game or with, another discussion and say oh no let's try it and it helps so much for one moment maybe but uh yeah we just want to help so what so this month's box this is march yes the so the the theme is do it yourself so what are some of the i hope you i hope you know them because you might not have them handy <laughs> what's the discussion <laughs> topics with this month's theme hey, this month themes it 
for about, for example, the wood, oh, it was about building. Then uh, do you remember building some stuff or repairing some stuff in the house? Uh, uh, or um, uh, what was it? Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, what can be what I put in the box? I write everything. But I, <laughs> uh, uh, for example, also, we have a box about nature we put a, a sensory bag with different uh, with different objects inside with for example uh, uh, a piece of wood also uh, um, a piece of fake grass a rock all different elements and we are, were asking uh, what it comes from you when we you walk in the nature uh, what you can see or um, uh, what's your favorite color we can put also when you were painting in the house uh, when you were doing home, homework uh, what was your favorite color of painting do you remember repairing electricity things or uh, yeah many questions I, I put uh, uh, just to engage discussion and that you meant you you talked about the question and then you you kind of gave some examples of answers and when you were talking about doing home improvement I was like, oh, I would ask my mom about the painting and the redecorating, and that's kind of where you went. But with my dad, it would have been something different. My dad yes. didn't have Alzheimer's, but I'm just I'm comparing, you know, male and female typical roles. Yes. So that would have been really cool. So what's what is uh the nature box? Is that for April? Uh, the nature box was was the one in the November. Ah, then we. Yeah, we we did the nature box. We did the vacation in USA. We did the uh, carnivals. Uh, we did the um, uh, love of food. <laughs> then talk about food. Uh, it was a super box. Um, uh, and uh, for the next month, what we have in mind, it's uh, the music, a box about music, a box about uh, fashion for a little bit more women, but it can be men, for example, the different hat over the time, uh, the different uh, shape of uh, beard, uh, beard, not beard, 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 my mustache. pronunciation, beard, <laughs> yeah, mustache, uh, this, uh, we have uh, a box about anniversary for July, uh, for the 4th of July, but about anniversary in general, uh, we have also vacation at the beach, uh, we <laughs> have, uh, what else I had uh, in mind, uh, I forget, but yeah, every, every month a different team, uh, and it's fun, and it's general for men and women. That makes sense. You could probably yeah. do a military one. My dad was yes. a Marine for four years. You're down in Southern California. So you're probably familiar with 29 Palms. He didn't yes. like the heat, so he didn't last in the Marine Corps very long. 29 Palms, very, very hot. <laughs> yes. Not not his uh, type of climate. So I'm thinking... You could do like military parades. I'm trying to think what else could be in a military kind of box. Um, yeah, because like my parents that, were born yeah. after World War II. Well, during World War II, so that makes it not a memory that they have super clearly. Uh. <laughs> and it, it, not and as it easy as it sounds. Be, yeah, and it, yeah, no, and it has to be also not to. Uh, you know all the reminiscence activity sometimes it can bring some sad memories also then we need to be careful of uh, if a box about military but we need if they have bad memory they went to war or they, they yeah it, it yeah we need to be careful about uh, we want them to have fun and smile we don't want them yeah. to cry and uh, uh, yeah <laughs> but it's a I good idea i know i know it <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm also thinking parades because yeah. in our family, we it's very it's still a tradition to spend New Year's Day watching the Rose Bowl parade. And man, okay. I absolutely hate it when January 1st is on a Sunday. For those of you who don't know, they don't do the Rose Bowl parade on a Sunday. And it's not the same on a Monday, let me tell you. <laughs> but we've we always watched that. Um, there was a local small town parade that very much focused 
excuse me, on the kids. So the kids Kid. would ride bikes or scooters or roller skates. And this was for the 4th of July. So they would decorate themselves and their, their mode of transportation for the holiday, for the, for the 4th of July. And it was just, you know, then you'd have hamburgers and hot dogs and all that stuff. And it just, that was, it's like, that's a really good feeling. I bet you that would have been really beneficial for both of my parents. It's a good so if you, idea. If you need any, if you need any help yes. with that one, tap me on. I'll, I'll be happy to yes, help with I that will. one. <laughs> I will contact you for sure. Yeah, it's always uh, hard to find uh, games, but uh, but yeah, it's fun also. <laughs> yeah, this this small town, you know, parade basically went around four city blocks, so it was a square. Okay. And my sister did it when she was like 10 or younger. I think she might have been younger. I have to look at the photographs to kind of jog my memory. But my daughter did it also when she was four or five and she was riding her bicycle. And when she they go all the way around all four blocks and then they're supposed to stop. Well, she was having so much fun. She circled around twice. <laughs> Nice. And it's like, ah, uh, you know, you're like, wait, they're having fun. And, but no, you're not following the rules. And, you know, my daughter is all 30, almost 30 and a half. So we're talking 25 years ago. And it's like, it puts a smile on my face and it's, it's a happy memory. So yeah, if you need yeah. help with parades or like hometown carnival parade stuff, I don't, you know, I don't, well, after the last two years, I don't know. I like, I haven't even seen one of those in so long. I don't remember what they're like. <laughs> But yeah, thank you. Good idea. Yes, I always uh, do brainstorming with uh, with people for my ideas of games and the uh, caregivers and people who can help me. I will we contact you. <laughs> yeah, well, you know where to find me. I yes. Um, I probably could come up with other ideas, but I'd have to think about it too long while we're trying to chat here. So, where can people find your Gleam in Your Eye boxes? I want to make sure that. They can find you. It'll be linked in the show notes as well. Thank you. Uh, yes, it's on, on our website, uh, gleaminyoi.com. You can you choose your plan monthly. You can cancel anytime or um, uh, three months or six months. And uh, yeah, and you can give us some comment. We are a startup. Then we are happy to to learn about how you liked our product and uh, what you think, if you have idea, if you we are super welcome or pictures to share uh, with us uh, of your loved one. And this, it's, uh, it's very helpful because our, the art of our business, it's the, the it's really to help people. Then more we see, we help people more, we get motivated more and, and it's, it, yeah, it's why we do that. It's not really because of money. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. A lot of these uh, caregiver turd enterprises aren't are not making us rich. That's for sure. But that's okay. We do it because it's the right thing to do, and we need we want to give back, and that's important. And the one thing that I can tell you, because you you keep saying you know people can cancel any time, I would give it three to six months because you know what my interest them this month might not interest them next month or they may be like i am not interested in that do it yourself bot mm, nope this is all bad and you might think no this isn't for my loved one but they might totally enjoy it next month that was yes. that's the one thing i've learned is you know it their 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 brains are a lot like kids and it's like you know you buy them the fancy toy and they like the box i'm talking about kids not not our parents <laughs> but it's it's something similar so you know give it to you know 3 6 months and you know i bet you if you play with each box individually i bet you can figure out ways of combining them so that you really extend your the use of each box by combining them i don't know i'd have to see two or three together and put my brain on that one but <laughs> That's where I'm going with, with that thought. Yeah, I agree with you. And I, I, what is nice also, it's we put uh, the majority of the games are reusable. Then it means that you you just organize you 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 create a library of games <laughs> at home of adapted games uh, for your loved one. Then one day it's raining outside, you don't know what to do, or your loved one today you 
you're not sure is super motivated, you just go and pick one game that you will know it will it will succeed and have fun. Then we make sure also to you can reuse the games. You can also dump out the box and go, oh my gosh, I'm such a klutz. Can you please help me clean this up? That might even get them motivated to do something in the box with you. I never tried that trick with my mom, but that's because everything I learned, I either didn't do it right or I didn't do it early enough in her disease progression. It was very frustrating. Don't, my mom. Don't be, <laughs> don't be too hard on you. Uh, you already did a lot, I'm sure. And uh, uh, I'm I'm doing a degree right now in gerontology, and we are studying caregivers. And my God, there is so much things to do. It's so difficult. I I know, I know it from me, but I I it, it's crazy. Then. Don't be too hard on you yeah. and it for uh, yeah, don't be please. <laughs> There's a lot more information these days than 10 years ago when my mom was in the early of the mid stage, which that always sounds like poor English. And so it's it's better now and it's when I started the podcast there was only one other support podcast like mine and now there's a whole bunch and there's one yeah. gal She's in LA and every time her, her podcast updates, I'm like, I can't believe like, I've never heard of any of these people she talks to, you know, so there's two different podcasts focused on supporting Alzheimer's caregivers. And we talk to like totally different people. So it's, it's definitely getting better, but everybody's brains are different. Everybody's personalities are different. You just never know what they're going through and what, what will work today might not work tomorrow. Like I mentioned, it's just, yes. it's, it's definitely a challenge mentally, physically, you have to pull out all your creative juices, which is easier for some of us than others. But it sounds like you have yes. a lot going on between getting a degree and running a couple of businesses, <laughs> taking care of your mom <laughs> and my kids. <laughs> oh dear. How old are your kids? But- Two and five. Oh my gosh, <laughs> little kids! Yikes. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I'm really motivated because I, like I said, I see some how I see the impact uh, impacts even on the person who has Alzheimer to reduce anxiety, to reduce the to reduce the the depression during the day, to. It's it's so motivated to to be able to help them because we what I find it's we do a lot of of um, of prevention uh, before we get all people get Alzheimer we encourage to do stimulation of the brain a lot before but when a person has Alzheimer I feel that we we abandon a little bit and there is not so much. We don't talk so much about it. We don't talk so much about the person who has Alzheimer. Uh, we talk a lot. We talk about the caregiver and it's super important, but what about the person who has, who has it, how to, to make his day-to-day different and improving his day-to-day? Uh, this is important for me, if we can help about that. Yeah, definitely. Focusing on both halves of the disease is important and it's changing a lot, but it's unfortunately very slow, but this has been really fantastic. I am hoping that lots of people check your games out and try them. Obviously I cannot do that with my mom, but I would have loved to, I would have definitely tried them had I, had you been around when she was still around so you guys can go to gleaminyoureye.com, check it out, and let both of us know what you guys think because, you know, we like to hear from everybody. So I really appreciate your chat this morning, and good luck with everything that you're doing. Thank you very much. You the same. Thank you. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your favorite podcasts.